little game called Contra 3. Oh my god. Oh man, don't talk about that game. <laughs> oh my god, probably the hardest game I ever played in my life. Not only was it hard, it was just something we'd never seen before. It was like... This is the 80s, so all these action movies and Schwarzenegger, Stallone, and uh, Van Damme's and all these guys, they were like, you know, top of the game, and we loved those movies. And this game was just so over the top, but it had like the alien aspect also embedded into it. It was hard, it was like 500 things happening at once, but it was so fun. Yeah, and uh, the best thing, it was two players simultaneously, two players shoot em up and uh side scrolling and uh that was that was one of the best parts about it uh yeah it was a hard game but it was really fun that's another game we borrowed these days you know games were expensive you couldn't have like 50 games on your own you just borrowed off your friends and just enjoyed it that way i remember act Tracer being so hard for me as a kid and you know especially the last level where you gotta fight all the bad guys at once. We couldn't even finish it. In fact, I only finished that game in my late 20s when I went back to it. But I only finished it last year. <laughs> but I finally finished it. <laughs> I think that's the difference between games back in the day where you might not be able to finish it and it's hard, but it was so fun you kept playing over and over again. Where nowadays, if you're playing a game and it's too hard, more than likely you just probably put it away and play something else and completely forget about it. The fun ability of the Super Nintendo and the games was something I don't think got matched by any console till now. Uh, we got to talk about Super Tennis. Ooh, whew. man, that's probably my favorite sports game of all time. Probably my favorite sports game of all time too. Maybe tied with Pro Evolution, one of them. Uh, I used to love tennis as a kid. These are the days of, you know, Boris Becker, Pete Sampras, Andre Agassi, all the peaks. Sergi Bruguera was my favorite. Sergi Bruguera, man. Oh, my God. I haven't thought about him for years. I used to play tennis with my friend, uh, Ahmed. So I used to love tennis, you know, in the real world. And this game was just amazing. You, had, you know, you had spin shots, slices, lobs. The controls were on point. Don't forget the serves, the crazy spin serves. And different characters actually had different abilities. It wasn't just like a random tennis game where everyone plays the same. You know, you have people like Steven Meyer that were just good at everything. Then you have like Hiro, who's amazing, hard hitter, great server. And then you have John, who's just like a monster. Everything he hits is like a tornado. Maybe it was the beard he had, man. It's like the only character with a beard and he hit the ball so hard. He was basically Andre Agassi, I think, you know. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and they even had like females in the game and they played different. It was so cool, you know, back in the days, normally if you play these sports games, each player would play exactly the same, but this was something different. And the battles you would have with people living in the area with your friends. Ooh. Growing up, I would say the best guy in the area easily, and I know you agree with me, was probably uh, Karim McDolly. Oh God, man! I I was one point where I got so good, but I could not beat that guy, man. He would just murder me. What was it about his game that was so good? I think the serves. You just couldn't return them. I remember that guy. I didn't play him that much. Like I was, maybe I was too scared as a kid. Those do these really crazy spin serves that no one else could do. Literally, no one else was doing them. I don't think I can still can do those serves, man, that he was doing. <laughs> but then, oh my god, as I got older, I kind of perfected myself in that game. Uh, playing people like Mir and uh, Hero. I actually went like on a 15 year unbeaten run in that game. He did, folks. That's, uh, that's actually a true story. And uh, who broke that run? I played cousins, I played friends, no one could beat me. I took it easy one day and, and let my brother beat me. Oh, please. <laughs> I don't think I ever played with my fullest ability and you beating me, if I'm telling the honest truth. Sometimes I'll give you games just for fun. Then, <laughs> you gotta be kidding me, man. Then like, regret it later, but if I played 
full intensity from the start. No one has beaten me. But yeah, that's such a fun game. That's a game we still play till today, you know. In fact, we might play that the next time we see each other. Oh, it's just definitely going down. And there's no other tennis game that really matched it. The next best probably tennis game came years later in Dreamcast, Virtual Tennis, but... Yeah. I mean, that was, a, that was an arcade game, wasn't it, really? If we're being honest. But it was a really good game. Super Tennis had, like, Mario as the ref. It was just a cool nod, you know, made by Nintendo. Yeah. I remember uh, FIFA 94. It was around the World Cup. Ooh. Oh, my God. I remember playing that game with my friends like it was yesterday. Uh, I always pick Germany. I don't know why. Do you remember any of the fake names in there? Klaus yeah, Huflisch. there was uh, Klaus Huflisch and uh, Dieter Meyer. Those are the two strikers. And I don't know who they were supposed to be, but uh, all I know is I used to score. <laughs> One of them must have been Klingsman. Yeah, Beerhoff or something. Uh, Klingsman Beerhoff or something like that. But uh, either way, it was uh, so much fun. And it was, I guess, uh, was that the first uh, football or soccer game that we played? I think it was. That's the first football game I ever played, yeah, de definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And uh, yeah, it was amazing. When we didn't grow up in Europe, I think they had sensible soccer. I don't know what years that came up. But yeah, for us, it was FIFA 94. Whew. And again, same Kareem. That guy was insane at that game. Yeah, I got him a few times, though, man. In that guy. I had better success in that game than I had in uh, uh, Super Tennis against that guy. Again, he was doing spin shots. I don't know what it is with him and spinning. <laughs> He's probably still doing spin shots, man. He doesn't know any game that have spin. <laughs> yeah. But probably... <laughs> I don't know how you learned. You know, you grew up with uh, Pakistanis and Indians too much, man. You learned too much spin. <laughs> he was crazy in that game. Yeah. We have to go to, at that time, the best basketball game series. Now, when we were younger, on the computer, we used to game called, we used to play a game called uh, Lakers vs. Celtics. I believe it was made by EA Sports as well. So one, we saw NBA Showdown. You remember oh. that game? Oh my god. When I got that game, that was the first game where each superstar player had a signature move. And you could do the air reversal Michael Jordan. You could do a alley-oop to yourself off the backboard dunk with uh, Sean, Kemp. Um, Sean Kemp and uh, I think Scottie Pippen. You had all these uh, special moves for each uh, superstar. And uh, yeah, everyone wanted to borrow that game. Oh, that's all I remember. And everyone wanted to come over and play. And they often did. Talk about the basketball scene in the Middle East. It was crazy. People Woo! outside it probably won't understand. For people that they don't understand, basketball was huge. And uh, I don't know if it still is, but in the Middle East, you had so many guys who could play. And they used to play all the time. Uh, the weather was agreeable. People would just play for hours and hours, as I certainly did. And... Uh, yeah, and uh, it was infectious. We used to watch the NBA on TV. Uh, I really loved Magic Johnson and later on uh, Michael Jordan. But uh, yeah, basketball was huge and uh, video games about basketball were big too. A lot of trash talk. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, we, had, we need to mention NBA Jam at this point, man. I think that came a bit later. Before that, I want to talk about uh, NBA Live. So from Showdown to NBA Live. Yeah, sure, sure complete overhaul of gaming style but it was really good a bit more realistic compared to showdown i remember in showdown with like mark price you'd never miss a three from a certain point there was a sweet sweet spot and john stockton john stockton and mark price never miss yeah. never miss a three but then nba live came and this kind of had different skill attributes towards different players yeah. So the NBA really Live, I remember the most, is 96. Oh. Like, the most enjoyment I've ever had of a basketball game is that game. Now, um, like, uh, you want to mention what the best part of that game was? Now, what we found accidentally? Now, uh, these games didn't have all the players, all the, you know. So it didn't have Jordan, I think. Did he retire at that point the first time? Yeah, he had retired. He retired. He had but... retired. So we we want to be Jordan. So you can create a player as well. That was the first 
new thing as well in the game. You can actually make you know your own guy, so you can make yourself yeah. and daydream that you're playing yeah. in the NBA. So naturally, we're like, let's just make Jordan, right? So he's not in the game, and you type in Jordan the last the last name, and suddenly all the skills and everything comes up, and it's like, oh my god, he's a hidden character in the game, and his scoring averages they're all correct. I'm like this is this real? And, and the then, animation as well, like actually turn, yeah. turned into Michael Jordan. Yeah, it turns into Michael Jordan. And then you do the same thing with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Then you get Magic Johnson, uh, Will Chamberlain, Bill Russell. And then you just put in all these legends, Larry Bird, Dr. J. Dr. J. They're all back in the game. It was crazy. Uh, this was a game that people would just come over and play all the time. Oh, yeah. Especially when we unlock these guys. And, you know, back in the day... It was most occasions where if one guy had the game, you wouldn't buy the game. You'd just try something new because you could always borrow off your friends. So so everyone was there, you know, like 25 people sitting in the room playing with Jordan versus, you know, Dr. J. In a video game back in the day, it was just something you couldn't even dream of, you know. It was very, like, linear, you know. Like, every other game before that was just... You could only play with active players. You wouldn't even think about, oh, man, what if Larry Bird was in this game? Yeah, this is something your mind couldn't even comprehend. You got to give him credit for introducing legends uh, in sports games. I think that was the first game to do it, or one of the first. 